Trooper here with another prop build. In this episode, we'll construct the Empire Strikes Back version of Boba Fett's EE-3 Blaster. Most of the parts were purchased from a home improvement store. There were a few parts that were purchased online. Makewell clips from Amazon.com, Molex connectors from Arrow.com, and a Tasco scope from Walmart.com. If you are going for 100% screen accuracy, you can 3D print the additional Greeblies, or purchase the 3D printed parts online. The following hand tools were used in this build. A jigsaw, a dremel, a drill, a hacksaw, screwdrivers, a small hammer and center punch, a small vise, and various grits of sandpaper. Before we get started, I'd like to give an Empire salute to Alan Sinclair, also known as Wizard of Flight, for drawing up some exceptional Webley Mark I flare gun blueprints. I used his blueprints to make templates that can be applied to wood. I'd also like to thank Dan Brown from the 501st Legion's Bounty Hunters Guild for brandishing the Happy Trooper EE-3 Blaster while wearing his amazing Fett armor and allowing me to take a few photos. A list of the building materials can be found in the description section below. To get started, download and print all of the templates from the link in the description below. I used Adobe Reader to print the templates. Because of the large size of the shoulder stock templates, they will need to be printed with the poster option. I suggest ticking the cut marks option to show where the paper should be trimmed. The other templates should be printed with the actual size option. Trim the stock templates, tape them together, and then cut them out along with the other templates. You can use scissors or any other means to trim out your templates. We will be using a few different thicknesses of wood. Place the outside stock template on top of some 1 inch wood and trace around it with a pencil. On the same piece of 1 inch wood, trace the body of the pistol. Using a jigsaw, cut out the two pieces. Trace the stock and inside stock templates onto some half inch wood and trace the pistol grip onto some quarter inch wood. To cut out the insides of the trigger hole and stock grip, use a large drill bit to make a hole, then cut out the centers using a Dremel cutting bit. Sand any rough areas down with a Dremel sanding drum. Use a jigsaw to cut out all of those pieces. You will also want to cut out the trigger and hammer using quarter inch wood. I found it easier to use a Dremel cutting bit to get a rough shape and then trim it down with 60 grit sandpaper. You may need to sand some parts down with 60 grit sandpaper to get a nice fit. After cutting and sanding, make sure the stock fits in the inside stock groove. For the PVC parts, affix the templates to the 1.5 inch pipe and coupling. Using a hacksaw, cut the 1.5 inch PVC pipe down to size. Secure the 1.5 inch coupling in a vise and carefully cut out the black area with a Dremel cutting bit. After you are done, the coupling should be able to fit over some 1 inch wood. Next, drill a hole on the 1.5 inch coupling's drill target mark. The hole should be large enough for a number 8 1 inch screw to pass through. To countersink the screw head, use a Dremel cone bit on the coupling. The screw head should be flush with the outside of the coupling.
To simulate the MPP flash tube, we will be using a 1.5 inch sink tailpiece. Trim off the flange with a hacksaw or Dremel metal cutting disc. This rough area will be hidden, but if you have super rough edges, they can be sanded down with coarse emery cloth. Affix the MPP flash template to the sink tailpiece. You do not need to cut the tailpiece to the length of the paper. Simply align the top of the template with the clean end of the sink tailpiece. Using a center punch, tap a groove into the center of each hole. This will help prevent the drill bit from slipping when drilling through a metal cylinder. Start with a small bit and gradually increase the bit size to get the desired size. Using some friction tape, make about 3 or 4 rotations around the sink tailpiece. It should now have a snug fit inside the 1.5 inch PVC pipe. After all of that cutting and drilling, let's take a look at what we have so far. Before assembling the stock, ensure that the stock fits in the stock groove. Apply wood glue to the outside stock piece and fasten the inside stock piece on top. Recommended drying time is 12 hours. Using 60 grit sandpaper, sand off any lettering on the ends of the coupling. You can also round out the end that will be facing forward. Follow up with 120 and 220 grit sandpaper to smooth things out. Last, go over the entire surface of the coupling with 400 grit sandpaper. This will help with epoxy filler and primer adhesion in later steps. Place the coupling on top of the gun body. Using a pencil, make a drill target mark on the wood as shown. Drill a small pilot hole and then follow up with a 332nd inch bit. Secure the coupling to the gun body with a number 8 1 inch wood screw. Trace out two of the end caps onto plastic sheet and cut them out with Lexan scissors. Sand down the edges so that they align with the coupling. Using E6000 adhesive, secure the coupling to the body. Fasten the number 8 1 inch wood screw and glue the end caps to the body and coupling with E6000. Let it dry for 24 hours. After the stock has dried, Place the template on top and trace out the area that needs to be tapered. Using 60 grit sandpaper, sand the area down to get a nice tapered edge. Sand down all of the edges and corners on the stock. Lay down some masking or painter's tape on the center of the stock as shown. Apply the stock template once again and drill two pilot holes all the way through the stock and the stalk. I finished with a 732nd inch bit. This will allow 1 inch post screws to pass through. Use some 60 grit sandpaper or a Dremel sanding drum to even out the stock and stock edge. While you have your drill handy, tape the 1 quarter inch wood grip to the body and do the same with the half inch stock. Apply the template and drill a pilot hole through all three pieces of wood. Finish with a 7 32nd inch bit. Secure with a 1 and a quarter inch post screw. Use wood filler to fill in any gaps, and then sand the handle edges down so that they are all even with one another. After sanding, remove the post screw.
Mix up some epoxy putty and apply it to the body and coupling as shown. Use some spare plastic sheet to build some edges. After it dries, sand it down with 60 grit sandpaper. Fill in any remaining gaps and holes with Bondo filler. Sand it down with 120 grit sandpaper. Fill in any pinholes and scratches with Bondo Spot Putty and sand it down with 220 grit sandpaper. You may now sand the edges of the trigger guard, the front, and top rear of the main body. Do not sand the grips, they have already been aligned with the quarter inch outer grip and half inch stalk. The front sight mount sits a little lower than the rear mount. To compensate for the height difference, trace the top of the small Maclow clip three times onto the plastic sheet. Cut the pieces out with Lexan scissors. Glue the three pieces together with E6000 or plastic epoxy. While it's drying, drill out a hole on each side of the front Maclow clip with a 732nd inch bit. The quarter inch socket screws should fit comfortably in the newly drilled holes. Loosen the scope mount screws to their loosest setting and measure the distance between the clamps. Mine came out to 10 millimeters. I measured two long 10 millimeter strips and four short 10 millimeter strips on the quarter inch wood and cut out all of the pieces with a jigsaw. The two long strips had a nice snug fit inside the scope mount clips. Drill a hole in the center of both of the long 10 millimeter strips. The hole was wide enough for a number 12 1 inch flathead Phillips screw to pass through. Use a cone bit to try to countersink the screw head. Next, glue the two smaller 10mm pieces onto the ends of the long 10mm piece using wood glue. After it dries, fill in any seams with wood filler or spot putty and sand to a nice smooth finish. Next, secure the three plastic sheet pieces on top of the front Maclow clip with tape. Use a drill bit to make a drill target mark on the plastic pieces as shown. Drill through the pieces with a 3 16 inch bit. Sand the outside 1.5 inch PVC pipe with 400 grit sandpaper. Remove the shine from the pipe. Using E6000, glue the three plastic pieces to the top of the front Maclow clip. Secure with tape. Apply some E6000 on the side of the Maclow clip as shown and place the 1.5 inch PVC pipe on top. Allow the fixture to dry for 24 hours. Let's take a look at the barrel assembly. Straighten out two of the picture hangers with a pair of pliers.
Using spot putty, fill in the bend mark and allow it to dry. Sand off the excess with 400 grit sandpaper. Glue the lock washer on top of the fender washer and then glue the 1 8 inch washer on top of the picture hanger. Using E6000, glue the trigger and the hammer onto the main body of the gun. These pieces may require extra sanding to get a nice fit. Allow all of these components to dry for 24 hours. If you have any gaps along the trigger and hammer, fill them in with wood filler or spot putty and then sand it down. Prior to painting, secure the rear Mayclaw clip with a little bit of super glue. Sand all of the Molex connectors with 400 grit sandpaper. In a well ventilated area, apply primer to all of the components that will receive a color top coat. Allow the primer to dry for 24 hours. On the next day, apply a coat of flat black spray paint. Try to spray in a back and forth motion applying light mist coats. Keep the can moving to avoid puddles, runs, and drips. Apply your choice of wood stain on the stock. Follow the directions on the can. Seal up the stain with a few coats of polyurethane in a satin finish. I use three coats of polyurethane. To rough up the side greeblies, I wipe some lacquer thinner on top of the lock washer and the small washer on top of the picture hanger. I also scrubbed off the post screws. After you are satisfied, use some E6000 to glue the picture hanger assembly on top of the washer assembly. Next we will simulate a gunmetal finish. To have a little bit of color variation, color up the Mayclaw clips with tape, they will retain a flat black finish. Using very fine steel wool, go over the barrel and body thoroughly. Generously apply graphite powder and rub it in with a wide flat brush. You should see a subtle gunmetal finish come through. To seal the graphite powder, lightly mist on some Krylon Satin Clear Spray. If you see spots in the finish, immediately brush over them with more graphite powder. Lightly sand the four sides of the Mayclaw clips and also sand the connection points on the Molex connectors. Secure the Molex connectors onto the Mayclaw clips using E6000. Secure with tape and allow the adhesive to dry for 24 hours. Repeat the same process for the washer assembly.
Apply some E6000 to the stock and grip. Secure the two pieces to the main body and fasten the 1 and 1 quarter inch post screw. After all of these items have dried, dry brush some silver enamel onto a few of the edges or use some rub and buff to simulate wear and tear. Use a 5 64 inch bit to drill holes in the rear of the stock and the middle of the grip to secure two D-rings. Loop some half inch leather strapping around one end of the D-ring. Drill a hole or use a leather punch to make a hole through both sides of the leather. Fasten using a cap rivet. Repeat for the other side of the strap. Connect the stock to the stock of the main gun body using two 1 inch post screws. Secure the D rings to the grip and the stock using the provided screws. Secure the scratch-built scope mounts to the Mayclaw clips using number 12 one-inch screws. Secure the scope onto the scope mounts and tighten the scope clamps. Insert the MPP sink tailpiece and then tighten the socket screws on the front Mayclaw clip to secure the MPP flash tube. Help a sand trooper out and give me a like, or better yet, click the subscription button below.